Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Now recently, we added a new member to the cult, Ken. And he is Ben, our commissions chief, his longtime gaming, hobbying, life partner, frenemy, whatever you wanna call it. And I tasked them both with, in a week of their spare time, so outside of work, they had to try and paint up as much of the new Leviathan box that Games Workshop sent us through for review as they possibly could. And Ken already had this huge Tyranid's army and he had his scheme down. He's like, I'll take them. And about two days later, got a message saying, yep, yeah, all done. Where do you want me to send the photos to? I was like, beg your pardon? Um, so get these photos, the awesome, grim, dark, gnarly looking nids right up my street and pop the photos up on social. And a lot of you seem to really dig what he'd done as well. So I asked Ken, can you write me up a simple guide of how you've done them? I think people would really dig it. So he sent them through, a super cool. I really fancied having a go at it. So here's me trying out someone else's recipe. Let's paint. Before any paintwork, Ken does a few modifications to the miniatures themselves. So he takes a mix of uh, plastic glue and putty. Now he said he likes to use the Tamiya Grey putty. I haven't got the Tamiya Grey putty, I've got this uh, AK one. But any of these plastic putties will work well. And you're gonna mix them with the plastic glue to create this sort of goop. Uh, and then you're going to splodge that over the carapace parts of the miniature. And this is just going to texture them up. Um, once that's done, he also adds a little bit of crackle paint on there, which is what that Martian iron earth is. Uh, now you can mix these things up separately in a little dish if you want to. Uh, or I'm just going to mix them up on the model themselves and smush them together. Um, but essentially it's, yeah, you're, you're, you're melting plastic to create different types of texture on the model. This is a, a very common thing you'll see in people who tend to go down that more... Uh, you might have heard it called Blanc Chitsu uh, or Grimdark, um, different styles of that, that more uh, stylistic takes uh, on paint jobs for miniatures and texturing them up a bit is a really cool uh, way of doing it before you get the paint on. You'll see some people will stick grass tufts and, and all sorts all over it and it, it really helps to, to take the aesthetic, that step away from just painting on the, the plastic miniature. So once all that's dry, we prime the model black, and then he gives the whole thing a coat of a GW iron rack skin. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of airbrush work on this. Uh, if you haven't got an airbrush, I don't think you're particularly gonna be able to follow the scheme, um, but you never know, there might be a few cool bits and bobs in here. There's definitely some things in here that aren't airbrushed uh, that you might be able to apply to your own thing. But when it comes to speed painting, which is what this is, uh, this isn't just army painting, you know, this is speed painting an army. Tools such as airbrushes, dry brushes, washes things like that become absolutely essential um, for getting things done um, for full transparency i thought i had iron rack and when i came to film it i didn't um, so this is a, a little mix i've made up that i think is very very close uh, to the scheme itself so once we've got that iron rack skim all over we're going to take Celia Green Shade, which is a wash, like an acrylic wash by Games Workshop. I think all the paints are Games Workshop probably, that, that Ken's used for this. Uh, so nice and, and readily available. And he sprays this into base of the tail, back of the head, uh, and into the joint areas on the model. Um, he said uh, on the tail, he goes sort of roughly uh, twice the distance covered by the little holes on the tail, depending on what the, um, the creature is and not diluted at all. I'm spraying at nearly 30 PSI on all of this. You're going to need to adjust um, depending on your uh, situation that you paint in, but I'm using a 0.4 needle and nozzle uh, in a Harder and Steenbeck Infinity. Uh, this is our signature series one. So once the green's on, we're then going to take another wash. This is Caribou Crimson, and we're going to apply this to the claws, to the hooves, to the front of the face, the mouth, and then a little bit of the tail as well and i love this little mix of the red and the green um, it's already bringing a bunch of life um, to the model but also we know that that combination of colors can work very very well together and it doesn't always need to look christmasy uh, as i'm i certainly don't think this is very festive uh, this little gribbly right now once we've achieved that we then move on to black now uh, ken suggested i used contrast paint black templar so it's a nice strong black, but it's a very thin paint, which again, we just drop straight into the airbrush. So we haven't had to do any thinning uh, for the last three colors. So the Celia Green Shade, the Caribou Crimson, and the black. So again, nice and quick. The fewer steps there are, the quicker this is getting done. Once that's all done, we then give the model a dry brush with the iron rack skin uh, all over just to, to pick out those details. Models like the Nids in particular, they take dry brushing fantastically well. 
uh, all those little details, really, really easy um, to pick them out with the dry brush. And already I was like, oh, this is really cool. And we're talking like minutes here, if that, um, on the job so far. Um, ben was doing some of the painting with him. He said it was, it was just ludicrous how quick he was firing um, some of these things out. Then for the little recessed ribbed bits um, that are all over the nid models, he uses a contrast paint. Now he's using this neat, so straight from the pot, no thinning or anything, straight into all those little recesses and into the joints as well. Again, products like contrast paints, just like washes and stuff, very, very useful for when we're trying to get a, a paint job done as quickly as possible, still looking really, really cool. Then something he, did that I th he does that I thought was quite interesting is he uses the contrast paint a little bit like an oil paint in certain areas as well. So by splodging it on sort of around the, the holes in the base of the skull, he then uses some water. So whilst it's still wet on the model, he uses clean brush with water on to just feather it out and blend it into the paint around it. Um, really nice idea. Um, I've used contrasts in a similar way to oils in the past. Um, they don't work exactly the same, um, but basically what you have is a slightly extended working time over just a normal uh, acrylic paint. Uh, certainly a much friendlier way of doing it. You can absolutely do this um, uh, two brush blending, you might see it called. Um, it's not quite wet blending, um, but it is doable with acrylic paints, but Contrast paints do make it a little bit easier because of that work time. And then it's a simple case of uh, painting the carapace black, but that's plenty of that. Don't see any more of that. Now we're going to pick out that texture that we applied um, before we uh, painted the model with that plastic glue and plastic putty thing. So this is just iron rack mixed in with the black to give us a grey. Quick dry brush over the carapace. Don't worry if you get a tiny bit of uh, sort of not overspray, but but over brush, I guess, if you will, um, doesn't hurt, just adds to that grimy look. Then it's moving on to powders. And I found this really old weathering powder I had, you can see by Cromlech, no idea if it's still available, but it's just a dark brown, a dark reddy brown. Um, I thought that'd be cool. Now, Ken simply said in the instructions, smash this into the carapace. So I did. Um, I think I used far too much. Um, it's not hard to remove. You just sort of keep brushing at it and remove it. Um, but uh, this is, I think, interesting, like you, especially when you're following instructions that are maybe simply written or when it's just written with photos, there's always that interpretation, um, isn't there? So I think uh, this is something, well, you'll see in the end photos, I definitely ended up with more powder on mine uh, than Ken did. I don't dislike it, um, but yeah, I think it's worth, maybe worth doing a test model, particularly if you're going to be, be doing a whole army, see what you like. Just wanted to take a second to say thank you ever so much to all of you that support us over on Patreon. Um, you're allowing myself and Andy to create videos each week over here and on there. All sorts of projects, stuff that we think is cool, that we're enjoying doing, but also stuff that we think you might find enjoyable and help you with your own painting, whether that's army painting, display painting, whatever. We massively appreciate the support you're giving us. Likes and subscribes on here help us a ton too, so thanks for that as well. Then at the same time, Ken says he does the base and he uses a dark brown, an orange and a light brown powder. This is a little bit different to how I do the base, even though I use powders and we've got that video up we've had for, for ages. Um, but once that's done, he says spray the whole model with a matte varnish and exactly what I thought was going to happen happened and I blew most of the powders uh, off the base with this. Um, I could turn the pressure down, that would probably have helped. I could consider using some sort of fixed stiff on the powders, or in my case, I just reapplied them afterwards because they're very matte anyway, right? Now we start to get to the really grimy, horrible bits that are really gonna bring the model to life. So this is a 60-40 mix of Blood for the Blood God, that's a 60 part, and a 40 part is Seraphim Sepia, which is a, an acrylic wash. Mix that together with one drop of black ink. I didn't really know one drop compared to how many drops of, of the others. I didn't know, um, but basically a dark, disgusting, reddy brown color. Don't stress out about specific things with this, like absolute perfect. It's an entire flock of seagulls just flown over there. That's helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, don't stress out about getting this perfectly right between all your models. Like you're just looking for some grimy, organic Ming. Um, and you'll be absolutely fine. And then one of my favorite things is using Yoohoo glue um, to create sort of uh, drool and blood effects in this. I've actually done a whole video on this 
So if you want some ideas of, of what you can do, go for it. But Ken suggests applying this to the mouth of the gun, uh, between the gun and the mouth of the, the monster itself, or the creature itself. And for the larger monsters, like the Screamer Killer that I keep flashing up in between, um, he's done it in the joints, uh, the large joints of where the, the arms and the claws and things are. Uh, I'll put some more photos up in a bit. You can see he's done that on the Von Ryan's Leapers as well. Um, really, really effective at just, just pushing that idea that these are terribly horrifying organic uh, you know entities um, and i think things like this using lots of different textures lots of different finishes so a, a very matte finish and then a very glossy finish and things like that they're very very effective for getting an army that looks cool on the table because there's lots of contrast of textures and colors and all of this just catches your eye and then he says he goes in with blood for the blood god just over the bits that are anywhere but the mouth basically so he leaves the mouth the clear Yuhu glue, sort of nice and drooly, I guess. And then the rest uh, is done with blood for the blood god. And then the last step is to paint in the eyes. Um, I might have done this before the drool step, if I'm honest, but it's not my scheme. So we just paint the eyes white and then using Tesseract Glow, which is basically a, a neon green ink or fluorescent green ink. Um, we just dot that into the eyes. Really, really effective. Um, a lovely little pop of colour. Um, and that's it. Now, here's my finished version of him on this little turntable, but that's not really the way that this paint job or this model is designed to be viewed. So I'm going to share some pictures with you now of the rest of uh, Ken's force uh, so you can see hopefully the, the impact that it has on the table. Um, you can see that that group of termagants just looks awesome. Um, and when they're all together, it, it's just got this... I'm a big fan of the eye of the whole grimdark aesthetic i really enjoy miniatures that are painted realistically for want of a better term but i also really enjoy miniatures that are painted in a grimdark style um it, it just ticks all my my boxes for when i think of of warhammer 40k and as i said at the start of the video the the speed with which he was able to to get this out was just outstanding and a lot of you, I imagine, that have bought the Leviathan box might be unsure what to do with your Tyranids. So if you can put aside a couple of evenings, uh, maybe one weekend, you know, maybe a day, you can get the whole side done just like this. It looks awesome on the table. And there you go. You've got a ready-made sort of opponent army. Maybe you've got something that you can expand out um, as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this different type of video i felt it was really important because whilst i do a lot of videos that i call army painting on here they're not speed painting um, and there's i definitely think a, a difference between the two uh, and i think you have to have a different approach between the two um, you know for instance i did those uh, von ryan's leapers uh, last video um, and i would consider that army painting but if i was doing them i'd really only be considering getting maybe a unit or two of something done in a week if i had a, a fair bit of hobby time Whereas with this approach that Kenneth took with this, you know, you'd be looking at getting an army done uh, in the same amount of time. Um, so I think, you know, do do what do the right job for what you're trying to get done, the right approach for what, you, what you're trying to get done. Um, and Ken and Ben, as I say, they love gaming against each other. Uh, ben took a very similar approach to painting the Space Wolves that he did. Um, and it's just meant that they've been able to get playing the game and, and enjoying themselves and throwing some dice um, as, as soon as they possibly could with two really cool looking little forces. Now, if you are interested in getting your Leviathan stuff painted or kill teams, uh, not kill teams, what they call combat patrols painted up and stuff like that, do consider hitting up Ben at our commission studio. Um, we've got a lot booked in at the minute. Um, we've got plenty of painters uh, raring to go um, to help you out if you haven't got the time um, to get everything done so thanks ever so much for watching if you'd like to see me tackle different people's recipes you know from the team let me know i know loads of you've been asking about ben's uh, imperial guard infantry um he just doesn't have time to get it done at the minute maybe i do so i could always ask him for that recipe and maybe we could work throughout together on here as well thanks ever so much for your support hit like if you've enjoyed the video subscribe if you're not already and i'll see you next time if you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.